Hey guys, Mechanic CG here and welcome back to Forza Motorsport 4. Today is episode number 65. If you guys are enjoying the content, then be sure to leave a like, comment down below, subscribe, and feel free to hit that join button as it really does help support the channel. Hopefully you guys enjoy. This episode was streamed live on YouTube. If you want to make sure to catch the streams, then be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation, or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. Right, so we're here for the 12 cylinder flagship face off. Uh, we're going to be driving the McLaren F1 as I am allowed to take it. And I'm going to get that one out of the way. Uh, we're starting off with Sedona Raceway, Bernie's Alps, Sunset Peninsula, Infinium Raceway, and Maple Valley. And I'm just going to give you a quick warning. We're going to be continuing a conversation in this episode about the uh, Forza Motorsport release. If you want to understand the full context, you may want to watch the previous episode before watching this one, as this is going to be a insane debate. So, enjoy. So yeah, continuing the conversation on Forza Motorsport and the absolute failure that it was. The issue I have, and I think that's really irritating for a lot of sports fans, for a lot of fans of, yeah, just sports in general, like the community, is how they release that game. Like, how, how could you turn around, release a game at such an expensive price point, and then turn around to your community and say... Oh yeah, this game was just meant to be developed. It was meant to be updated. It's designed for updates in the future. But the price doesn't reflect that. So the people that spend the most money get no content at the start and get it later on. Whereas people that spend the least money will have a complete game. How does that work? Like, in anyone's right mind, as a game developer, how can you turn around and go, yes, I'm going to charge the people with the less, least amount of content the most money, and the people with the most amount of content the least money? Because that's how sales work anyways. Later on in the life cycle of a game, like, it, obviously, for games that get updates and add content... It's all right, and I don't have a big issue with the fact that they're doing this, but the fact that there's no content to start with, they're literally paying £90 for a game that has £20 worth of content in it. There's only 20 tracks in the game. There's a similar m number of tracks in that game. Obviously, people are like... Oh, well, it's from the ground up, which I don't believe it's from the ground up. It doesn't look it. But even giving them the benefit of the doubt, a lot of the Forza games... Like, Forza Motorsport 5 was done from the ground up. It was a new system. Like, a majority of those Forza games... I would much rather, if they released a game that looked like Forza Motorsport 5... I would have bought that, as opposed to what they've got now. I'm sorry. You might disagree, but... I'm not turning around and spending a ridiculous amount of money... For a game that doesn't have any content. Like... And obviously the issue with the fact that, oh, the game might not have been ready... It bloody well should have been. Like, I get that game development is getting more difficult because of the fact that they're prioritizing graphics, which is something that is so much more difficult to optimize for than, say, actual gameplay. Unpopular opinion, but I'm playing Forza Motorsport 4 right now and I think this game looks great. This game's graphics... You do a comparison between this... And Forza Motorsport 7. Motorsport 7 is going to look a million times better than this. 
the issue for me is the fact that you're paying like the the game's been in development for six years they didn't add DLC content or any DLC packs or anything to Motorsport 7. So, taking off two years for COVID interruptions, which development could still happen during COVID, by the way. It's not the fact that everything stopped during COVID. It just made things more difficult. But I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that those two months two years they couldn't develop a single thing right that's still four years of development four full years of full-on development to make this brand new game right which by the way was teased almost three years ago and they had a build with all these graphics that was there and they can turn around and say, oh yeah, the game was built, developed to be built upon. Like, I'm sorry, you've had four years to build what is essentially the base of a video game. If you gave it that extra year, you'd have a full video game. You would have had the bug tests in. I still wouldn't excuse seven years for a, a Forza game. Because they've done it in two years. But that one extra year should have done it. There is no way on this earth, right, that they can turn around and say that in that six years they were developing. Like, they haven't been working on anything. Like, I don't understand it. How can you go from making amazing games every two years to then having a break for six years... And when you release your next game, which, by the way, has six years of development, three times what they had before, and there is no content, the game has is riddled with bugs, it's so poorly optimised, and it doesn't even run on PC. Oh yeah, and let's go back to that, right? I'm sorry, this is such a rant, but I don't care, I'm proper pissed off with this. Because I brought it up on, um, what's it called? The uh, <clears throat> Motorsport 8 stream that I did when it wouldn't run. I spent an hour trying to get Motorsport 8 to run, didn't run, refunded it. The issue is, right, and this is a huge bugbear for me. Microsoft decided, hmm, do you know what? Rather than use Steam to install all software required for the game, which Steam offers that, by the way. Steam lets you install and use, like, whatever software is needed. You look at Ubisoft, for example, their games, you can install Ubisoft Connect with your Steam download. Which is part of the reason why it's so irritating how Steam does it, because I don't want them to force you to download like Ubisoft Connect, but fair enough. At least you can install everything, even the applications that are necessary. For example, F1, right? They use a voice recognition software for Windows. Uh, and that voice recognition software runs as an installer when you launch the game every single time. It installs that software uh, the first time you run it, sorry. Every single game has it because they use it for when you're talking to uh, the race engineer. Right? That software installs. So why on earth has Microsoft turned around and gone, Right, this software that's required for Forza Motorsport, you must install it through the Microsoft Store. So the reason why I can't play it was because the Microsoft Store was broken. Hence why I bought it on Steam. For them to turn around and go, yes, you need to download this. Download it from that Microsoft store. The store that doesn't work. That I deliberately avoided by buying it on Steam. But you're forcing me to use. Fuck you. This, this video is demonetized. Straight up. I don't care. <laughs>
But yeah, it's a, it's a huge issue. Like, and I get some people will turn around and go, oh, well, I'm not having any issues. So, lucky you. Your PC works, mine doesn't. The issue is not the fact that my PC doesn't work, it's the fact that it's forcing you to use software that potentially doesn't work for a large majority of people because of the fact it's so poorly developed. That would be like if you download, bought a game off of Xbox but it forced you to download it through a PlayStation Store or it forced you to use PS Now. I, I know that's an extreme example but it's a completely different software that won't work with your Xbox, right? You know, it won't work. I was looking at OBS. Like, the, the example makes sense, and it's the same thing with Forza Motorsport on Steam. Like, you buy it on Steam so it works with Steam and all its integrations to avoid the Microsoft Store. But they're forcing you to use the Microsoft Store, which is extremely broken. Okay, cheers. But it doesn't it doesn't end at the Microsoft Store either. If you have a look, Dustin Eden actually did a video on it. And in Dustin's video, his game didn't run because he uninstalled Microsoft Edge. And one of the run times that was required needed Microsoft Edge, but it wouldn't install it properly. So even after reinstalling Microsoft Edge, he still couldn't run the game. Like, for, for a video game that's supposed to be of this quality, the fact that, oh, it's a, supposed to be uh, Gran Turismo with all optimized, oh, look at the graphics, it's so good. No, fuck off. Like, genuinely, the fact that they can make a game and it doesn't run on a majority of people's PCs. Like, there was... I, I can't reiterate this enough. And again, I apologise if you're listening to this rant. Please leave your opinions in, in the video or in the chat. Call me an idiot, whatever. Like, I, I just proper rant into this one. But you, you can't turn around have six years of development and say have a buggy mess that doesn't run properly that doesn't have any content but then you look at games like Forza Motorsport 4 for example that was developed in like two yeah I know the graphics aren't as good but like where is there a when are we going to stop focusing on graphics because we're getting to that point where games are taking a ridiculous amount of time to develop. And it's going like that at the moment. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if Gran Turismo 9... Uh, sorry, Gran Turismo 8... Is released in 2035. And the next Forza Motorsport will release in 2038. Or something like that. With the way that these curves are going in terms of development time, because of graphics. Because they have to go over so much more details to make it look perfect. And people are like, I want pretty looking games. I'm sorry. That's not, that's not the focus on gaming anymore. Once we hit 1080 60 FPS on, a, on games, that was the limit. We didn't need any more. Yeah, for tech demos, we can have it. But I would much rather a further render distance. Maybe more assets on screen at any given time. Maybe make higher quality of the, the people in the audience. But don't focus on making absolutely everything such high quality. That it can run at 4K60. Like... I want higher frame rates as opposed to higher um, quality. At the moment, my 1080p monitor, yeah, for people that have a TV that's like 60 inches and they sit like two inches from the screen, yeah, you might need 4K. 
But like from the distance that I'm sat, like the screen should fill your main focus area, which is like this little area. Even if you've got a 60 inch TV, if I had a 60 inch TV, it'd have to be at the other side of the room. It should fill your focus, like... But a lot of gaming developers are focusing on the wrong things. And it shows. With, with how Forza Motorsport has turned out, it shows big time. And I know what it's about. It's about money and people are like, right, well, we can't release any worse than the last time, so it's got to be better. Why can't we sit at a point and go, right, well, this was good. Let's stick to it. Get some new content. Get some new features. Get a new story, a new campaign. This quality is good. Stick with it. And that's one of, one of the things that needs to be changed in game development. That's why I'm, I'm really hoping with this new WRC. Because I've looked at it and I'll be honest. In terms of visual graphics, it looks similar to Dirt Rally 2.0. Maybe even slightly worse. I'll be honest. I think that's partly to do with the Unreal Up engine upgrade. It does look slightly worse. Ever so slightly. But extremely unpopular opinion. As long as the game can run at 60 FPS, which by the looks of it, bar a couple of frame drops I've seen in a couple of videos, actually looks quite good. If I can sit there, play the game at 60 FPS... And I can see where the road is going, and the physics are good, and there's content. We're going to have a fun time with WRC. And this is the issue. Game developers are sitting there thinking, oh yeah, we've got to make this game look so good. I don't give two shits. And I don't think a lot of people would give two shits. But unfortunately, there are some people... and. I I'm going to blame it on PC gaming, 100%. PC gaming is miles ahead in terms of like how much it costs. It's so much more expensive, but it's so much more demanding. It's so much more graphical power. There's so much more stuff that PC gamers are like, right, well, my game must run at 4K at 120 FPS. So they then have to make this game at a really high quality. And then, oh, if it doesn't run, well, fuck you. You know. It's just one of those things that's really irritating me. Because it's been happening for, like, two years now. The last two years has been crazy. So many games I've refunded after buying it because they are terrible. And I'm, like, beyond annoyed. Like, at this at this point, I, I've definitely confirmed that I'm not going to be doing uh, Motorsport 8 on this Mega Series because the way that the content is, the fact that it's just added and then removed... There's no point. There's no actual campaign. The campaign will change every time I load up the game. So there's no actual progression. There's no series. There's no nothing. I can't do a series on it. Physically impossible. So I'm not going to bother with that game. And I, I'm not playing games just because I can make series out of them. But at the same time, if the game doesn't have a campaign, the campaign's constantly changing... There is exactly zero reason for me to buy the game now. Why would I buy it? What would I buy it for? So that I've got Forza Motorsport as a label on my Steam library? Like, it sucks. And I don't want to speak this way about Forza. But at the same time, like... It's down to their development decisions. And I know it's it's not the devs' fault. They've got bosses that are there that are like, money, money, money.
I would just love to see a game where the developers are the ones in charge. The people with money have no input in it. If the developers make the game and it's terrible, then they can lose their job. Whatever. But let the developers have a choice. I mean, to be fair, if they make a terrible game, they lay off their employees anyways. So, yeah. Let the developers make the game. Don't let the higher-ups make those decisions. See what happens. Because I can guarantee you, games would become a million times better. Hundred percent. If they didn't even think about money, they just sat there, made a fun game, and then let them price it afterwards. I mean, that's similar to what we're hearing from WRC, to be honest. Codemasters has just been left alone, from what I've heard, uh, from EA. Like, EA has just said, right, Codemasters, crack on, make a game. And by the looks of it, it looks quite fun. I'm, I'm really hoping for WRC that they're going to add, like, seasonal content. So, say, like, May next year, they'll add the 2024 season as, like, a DLC. You pay, like, 30 quid for it, but you get all the content from 2024. And then they'll make, they'll make like, a bundle that you can get the base game and 2024's content for, like, 50 quid. And then they'll do the same next year that has all the content plus 2025 for 40 quid again. And they'll just keep doing that. And they can keep making money. Plus, they keep earning money for old content as well. So, extra bonuses. Means they don't have to redevelop or work out how to integrate the old content into a new game. Because they'd have to make a new game somehow. So there's none of that working out. It's just an update that adds the new stuff. I think it'd be a great idea. Financially and logistically. But we'll have to wait and see. But the way that Forza is doing it. Like I would have been much happier if they made a full game. Is this MC Mechanic? Yes. MC Mechanic is talking a fuck ton today. <laughs> I just really, really, really hope that the new Forza, they can fix it within a year. Because if they can't fix it within the next six months and give it, like, actual reasonable content, I think the game's dead before it even started. And it would be classed as dead before it even started. They have, over the next six months, they've got to bring out... I'd say almost quadruple the amount of content they have at the moment. In terms of single player stuff. They need to keep updating the events. Because again. If they don't do that. They're going to disappoint people that have already bought the game. And they're going to have to fix all these bugs. And make it playable. In about six months time. And if it's not done by then. I, I will officially say the game is dead in the water. It's fucking dead. Goodbye. Rest in peace. Like, I don't know. Anyways, that's my thoughts of motorsport rant of the day. Done. Honestly, it's been so... The part that irritates me as well, this is going to be my last point, because I can't really do any more after this. Because this is technically the last video that I'm actually going to do. Actually, no, I can get one more video, but I'm not going to be talking about thoughts in that video. Anyways. Go back to the, the point. There is no way in hell that I am sitting down. No, that's not what I was saying. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> this is proper. Got my brain confused. The, uh, the only reason that I actually bought the ultimate upgrade, as opposed to buying the base game, because I knew what was coming out, other than the fact that there was actually quite a few... I think it was 52 cars? Or 42 cars? Something like that. Which I mean is pretty cool. The main reason why I bought it is because... 
there's literally five days of early access. That early access is decent for a YouTuber if you're trying to make content while well, there's a lot of people waiting for the game to come out. There would be a lot of people waiting those five days just to get it on Game Pass. So the only reason I spent that extra 30, 40 pounds was so I could get it early. I'm not going to spend that extra money if I then didn't get the early access because the game wouldn't launch. I didn't even get into the main menu. That's what I find unbelievable. The game literally got me onto the loading screen and that's it. Infinite loading screen. Didn't get in the game. Even when I stopped streaming, it still didn't work. So, safe to say Forts is dead in the water. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.